Hi, I'm Jeff Demain. I'm a clinical professor with the University of Washington, and I'm, my clinic is in Anchorage, Alaska, in the Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology Center of Alaska. Well, I'm here today. We're going to talk a little bit about climate change. This is a topic that has been on everyone's thoughts for certainly the last decade. And what we think about climate change is receding glaciers, rising sea levels, melting sea ice. And along with that, there are other factors that may be occurring that can cause impacts to health that are not maybe directly associated with climate change, but may be more secondary or indirectly related. When we see heavier floods and more storms, it starts impacting other aspects of our environment, such as the increased levels of mold. Well, increased mold in damp buildings and associated with flooding has been associated not only with the development of allergy to molds, which can cause upper and lower respiratory allergies, but also increasing severe respiratory disease. So molds, especially alternaria, can not only again create the allergy itself, but the reactions in the lungs are more and more severe. So asthma becomes more difficult to manage. We can also see the development of mold colonization in the sinuses and in the lungs. We call that a hypersensitivity syndrome. Other things are occurring as well. We have high temperatures, higher temperatures, and increasing levels of carbon dioxide. In those environments, studies have been done looking at what does this do for pollens? Because pollens are also critical when it comes to allergy symptoms as well as the development of allergy. Well, indeed, that is occurring. So we're seeing seasons are getting longer, especially as you move up in more northern latitudes. Seasons are up to 27 days longer than they were even seven to 10 years ago. So with these prolonged seasons, that's more opportunity for exposure. Well, to complicate this a little further, the carbon dioxide levels have also been shown to increase the amount of biomass and pollen production by a plant. This has been demonstrated in a more scientific environment where you have contained environments where only thing that varies is the carbon dioxide level. So if you take levels from 1870, when this was what we call the pre-industrial age, from current levels and then to projected levels of carbon dioxide, you can see almost a doubling or, or tripling of the level of pollen that are produced in those environments. So taking that out of the lab, but Dr. Lewis Siska did this in Baltimore, he had a, a pollen plant area that was, these were ragweed on rural Baltimore, and he had that same size pollen plant area of ragweed in urban Baltimore. And there's about a 30% difference between the carbon dioxide level between those two environments. Well, indeed, we saw a significant increase in the amount of pollen produced and what we call biomass, which is the plant biomass. It went up 189% between those two areas, even though they were literally just miles apart. So the carbon dioxide levels play a very significant role when it comes to plants. Additionally, we will take this one step further. When you look at a pollen grain, there are certain proteins that cause the allergy. They're the allergenic peptides. Well, so we measure those peptides. Uh, and it's been shown that in rising carbon dioxide, the allergenic peptide of each pollen grain goes up. So now we have a situation where we have longer seasons, we have more pollen production, and the pollens that are released are more allergenic. So this is a combination that's becoming very troublesome. We can take some of these changes that we're seeing from environmental factors related to climate change one step further and think about droughts. And you say, well, how does drought affect allergies? Well, drought is associated with increased wildfires. Wildfires release smoke and particulates into the air. And pollution, particularly particulates, have been strongly associated with not only causing primary pulmonary issues, but it's been shown to increase what we call immunogenicity or that inflammatory response to other allergens. So it has a compounding effect. So uh, while all these are in the back, kind of behind the curtain a little bit of what we're seeing with climate change, they're very real threats because 25% of our population has some form of allergic disease and we're probably looking at somewhere between 8 and 11% have asthma. And then if you can start considering other pulmonary disease like COPD, these are issues that are going to affect a, a vast number of people throughout the world. So 
I wanted to just play, just point these issues out, let you kind of think about them a little bit, and just let it be, this is something that's becoming a little more directly impactful to what we experience every day in our life. So what can we do? Well, I think everyone can do their small part to try to reduce some of these greenhouse gas emissions, do their part to preserve our environment, and maybe try to reduce some of the pollutants that we're seeing. So if we all do that, I think our, you know, we're heading in a good direction or can head in a good direction in our planet. So be an advocate for our planet. And other than that, I'd like you to breathe well, play hard, and be healthy. Thank you.